Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Barry, That Goat Metal Show. I'm over here with my partner, Rich, the silent producer, with our first, first interview. Had to be the great, the man, Chucky Brown. From Thank you Crazy for having Eddie. me. Thank you oh, for having man. me. Yo, so, so, glad for having you, me so glad for you to be with us, man. And uh, uh, you know, I, you look, if, if I'm going to get anybody who's going to be my first musical guest, is going to be the man, the myth, Chucky Brown, man, because... You not only are you a, a, a great musician, but you are a historian to, to hardcore and metal in, in New York City and the Bronx. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that at least people from outside of New York City could understand who you are, uh, what you're all about, and, and maybe some of this history that we have here, man. First of all, thank you for having me, guys, man. Um, I'm a big fan of the show. I've been following, you know, I've been following the show from day one. How many years now going on Gold Metal Show? Uh, well, well, I mean, it, it, I've had the channel for about what was it? What were rich like ten years, twelve years? And I, but it's I, about now about eleven years. But but the channel has really picked up in the last like uh, I would say four and a half to five years. Yeah. Oh, okay, so okay. Okay. Pretty much during the time of the pandemic is when I like really started taking the channel seriously, and and then that's when everything started like getting pushed around, and Rich joined in, and then it just gotcha. started flowing from there. Got you. That's what's up, man. Much props to you guys, man. You guys are doing a hell of a job. And for all you guys watching, make sure you guys subscribe to that Goat Metal Show. <laughs> for hey, real, hey, for man. real. Yo, uh, Ch yo, Chucky has his own YouTube channel, Chucky Brown Hood TV. Yeah, we'll definitely has... get into that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. get it. We're gonna get into his channel and all his mm. stuff that he has. Uh, but uh, let me uh, I, I guess I'll start off one quick one question to you, and we'll go we'll go with Rich back and forth. Me and Rich will do our we'll round do, table. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll uh, you know, gang rape you there for a minute. All right. Cool. cool. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> basically, you, 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 you know, you, you're in crazy, you know, since now you've been in crazy Eddie at the, the times that I've known you, I've known you all these years as being a phenomenal bass player. You've done Thank all you, sorts, you've done you. more styles playing, you know, from, from metal, death, thrash, you did, you did it all. Yeah. And um, I was shocked uh, from when you, decided to just put down the bass and then you started to become a singer. How did that turn about from going from being a bass player to then all of a sudden becoming a vocalist for crazy? Oh people? man, well at the time um uh uh Lenny Lenny had hit me up and the thing is Lenny would always jam out with Jason. Jason Madrock, he's our drummer. He um he, he's playing with uh he normally plays with down low. Remember the hardcore band down low, NYHC? Yeah. Of and uh, what you would call it, he was like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, hey, nothing much, man. Um, I was I was going to play bass, but I always had this thing where I always wanted like to go up front, sing, and, you know, I, I watching uh, Ian from Minor Threat, uh, uh, fucking Harry Violence from Black Flag, and especially being hardcore punk, we wanted to do something authentic taking it back to the roots not just that typical hardcore chugga chugga tough guy oh no, uh, yeah. shit but yeah, we no. wanted to take it back to the roots and play that good authentic um uh, uh hardcore punk rock you feel me and um we got together and we teamed up like fucking voltron and it worked out we recruited uh kevin kevin smith which you know he norm uh he's originally from um fahrenheit 451 yeah he got on bass and yo, man, and it worked out, man. We got together, chemistry was good, and um, yo, we 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 did our thing, and Crazy Eddie was born, you know. That's fucking oh, yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. And um, ahead, just for the, yeah, I wanted to jump in real quick. I know uh, we're gonna definitely talk more about Crazy Eddie and more, you know, shows and uh, uh, you know, possible future recordings and stuff like that. But uh, for uh. Uh, Barry and myself know you for many years, but many of the viewers of the show are more uh, metal orientated and we're yeah. talking about hardcore punk. So um, we wanted uh, you to maybe talk a little bit about some of the earlier bands that you started with that led you into uh, uh, Crazy Eddie. Um, and I didn't want to shout them out in the wrong order, but I know you were in an abject and the wasted yeah. and all that. So if you could just touch back on your your first one, you know, and each uh, touch up on each project. All right. Well, um, my parents, I, I was lucky enough. We we had the first run of cable, which was the like the, it was like rectangular shape with a bunch of buttons and had like a squelch, so like that you could have the uh, clear picture. So um, it was uh around the beginning of MTV really. So, you know, getting on MTV, and I remember I saw a music video of a heavy metal band called Rat. 
And it was a music video to Round and Round. And I'm like, yo, this is fucking badass. This is fucking cool. Because before that, I was into stuff like um, Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Culture Club, Duran Duran, Cyndi Lauper, uh, you know, stuff like that. Because my, my mom's, the 80s, 80s stuff, my yeah. mom's was into that. And believe it or not, I was a lot into New Wave. A lot of new wave music. I was a lot into new wave because uh, that was that was very popular in the 80s. They would give it on the radio, a shitload of uh, music videos on MTV. And not just MTV either. I would watch anything that was music related. I would try to grab onto listening to the radio, uh, uh, watching Friday night videos. There used to be this channel on UHF called U68. And um, you would have to put a little piece of uh, aluminum foil with the bunny (laughs) ears and all that to get that clear picture. And I would record a lot of videos from there using, you know, the VCR, grabbing my mother's um, novella videotapes where she record her novelas. And I'll record over and she'll get pissed off. Jackie! (laughs) You know, and screaming and shit like that. And um, that's how slowly but surely I started getting into um, uh, more of like the uh, hard rock music, which first was more of like the glam rock, hair metal stuff, like uh, Rat, uh, uh, Quiet Riot, uh, Twits His Sister. Uh, uh, and then from there, got to the more heavier stuff like Metallica, Wasp, and stuff like that. Alice Cooper, uh, of course, Ozzy Osbourne, the 80s Ozzy Osbourne, um, Van Halen, of course, and stuff like that. And that's how basically I started out. I started off listening to the radio, watching um videos on MTV and whatnot. And from there, I started uh, buying uh, cassette tapes, going to uh, record stores and um, getting my hands on these cassette tapes. And this will be a whole bunch of rec- uh, 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 stores, not just record stores in particular. Like I remember I'll go to, well, with my mom Dukes to Woolworth. I don't know if people remember Woolworth. <laughs> okay. Alexander's. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, rock Bottom. Remember Rock oh, Bottom? Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, one. Rock yeah. Bottom, Coconuts, Strawberry, Sam Goody, Tower Records, down the line, you know. The Whiz. Little, the, nobody yeah. Beats the Whiz. There was one on, I believe, 3rd Avenue in the South Bronx. Yep. It was. We would it go was. To. Um, even Crazy Eddie on Fordham Road in the yeah. Bronx. Yeah. I would go to the Crazy Eddie downstairs. And what I would always do, I would always buy a rap record, you know, rap hip hop record, and a hard rock heavy metal record. So it would be, I'm going to get Rum DMC. I'm going to get Twisted Sister. The next, the next time I go, I'm going to get Quiet Riot. And I'm going to get the Fat Boys. The next <laughs> day I go, I'm going to get Slick Rick. And I'm going to get fucking um, uh, Metallica or whatever the fuck. So I always got me a hip-hop rap record and a heavy metal record. That's awesome, man. And then, and then when, uh, once you know, you got all those influences and you were listening to all that music um you got the itch to want to create music and then uh, oh absolutely what, what, yeah. what, what, what was one of the, the the first projects um that you did well when i was uh, uh i was maybe like seven years old uh, right across the street from me because i used to live in upstate new york in fulton for, for like a good three four years so i went from head start preschool all the way to like second to the ending of second grade in Fulton, New York. Fulton, New York is not too far from like Syracuse, Oswego. It's like a good six hour drive away from the Bronx. And um, at that time, my mother, she bought me uh, an acoustic toy guitar and she knew this guy that played guitar. So she had me take lessons from homeboy that lived across the street. But um, he was a much older dude, but he was more into, like, folk. He was more into, like, Neil Young and Johnny Cash. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck that. I want to play fucking, you know, hard rock heavy metal. I was <laughs> a young kid. I want to yeah. play what I'm seeing on TV, you know, Kiss and, and, and all that stuff. So then I little by little, I just stopped going because I didn't want to learn fucking, um, you know, like the blues folky shit, you know. And then down the line, she bought me an electric guitar. Now, you know, at that time, I didn't know how to play, and I was just strumming the strings. I thought the parts where you tune, I thought that just holds the string. I ain't know. <laughs> so I was just that's, that's imitate. usually the guest of everybody. When yeah. They yeah. So I was just imitate what I see in the music videos or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, in my room thinking I was Eddie Van Halen and shit. And um, then from there... I jumped into bass guitar, but that came later in high school when I used to go to Theodore Roosevelt High School in the Bronx. 
And at Theodore Roosevelt High School, they had um, uh, uh, music classes. So I remember before the music teacher, before we started uh, learning how to play instruments, he wanted us to learn how to uh, uh, read, read music. And then once a week, he will bring in the VCR. Remember when teachers would bring in the TV with the VCR? Yeah. Remember that? Uh -huh. he, would, he would bring in the TV with VCR and he'll make us bring in music videos. <laughs> so one day I brought in Keen Diamond, uh, <laughs> Sleepless Nights. <laughs> now, mind you, 99.9 .9 of the students in that class weren't metalheads. There was probably one metalhead that used to sit behind me. He was this Honduran metalhead kid. Wow. And the rest were all hip-hop heads. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I brought in that videotape to watch King Diamond's Sleepless Night music video, everybody was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? And then you know how King Diamond, he uses growling and singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So people were like... Yo, they were looking at it like some demonic, satanic shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from there, uh, we he started putting out the instruments later down, uh, down the year of of that school semester, and uh, I gravitated more towards the bass guitar. And what was cool about that music teacher, his name was Michael Tamasulu. Uh, he was into classic rock, so a lot of the music that he would teach us would be classic rock, and um. And some, some like uh, pop stuff like Madonna, Sade, like we did Smooth Operator from Sade. Uh, yeah. We did um, uh, House of the Rising Sun from The Animals. <laughs> we did uh, uh, um, Hey Joe from Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> and, we, and I would learn all this on bass with the band. Now, mind you, the band also had a couple of metalheads that I, w I used to go to high school with as well that also formed bands. So in Theodore, Ro Theodore Roosevelt High School had other uh, metalheads that later on formed bands that people out there might know as well as you, Barry. Yes. And what and uh, what was the, 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 the true, you, you started off with any of those bands, Chuck, uh, that, that came out of Roosevelt? Yeah, well, um, I used to go to high school with this, with this kid that both me and you know, uh, Barry, he used to live across the street from you back in the 80s and 90s by the name of George Vasquez. And George Vasquez, I used to go to junior high school with as well in the Bronx on um, on Prospect right off the uh, right off of Tremont wow. called um, IS-193, IS yeah, Whitney 193. M. Young, mm -hmm. uh, 193 junior high school. So fast forward, we went to high school together and we also had music class together. And George Vasquez was, was more of a drummer. And around that time, we formed a band called Out for Blood. And it was more and more hardcore. And it was me on bass, George Vasquez on drums, uh, David on lead guitar. He was from Queens. And rest in peace, Mike Bonilla on rhythm guitar, who's Ooh. originally from Rampage, Mike Bonilla. Wow. He played guitar with us as well. And on vocals... Uh, Rob, who was the singer for Red Eye Devil, and um, everybody gets hurt. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. I believe he also sang for Terra Av. Shit, That's if crazy. I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I met I met Rob at a Biohazard show when Biohazard played with Onyx at the Academy. Rest in peace. The Academy, yeah, yeah. Back in like '93, I believe it was. Mm, yeah. And that same show, they filmed the Slam video. They took parts of the Slam video, and they also filmed the Bionics remix. Oh, yeah. The, the Biohazard with, with Onyx. They filmed that, that music video at that same show where I met Rob. All right. And I Thanks. met Rob at that show. We exchanged numbers. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Let's film this band, blah, blah, blah. And Out for Blood was born. Nice. So Out for Blood had members from Queens and from the Bronx, which is crazy, Barry, because... He would pick us up all coming from Queens. And at that time, I was living on University Avenue in the Bronx between Kingsbridge and Fordham. I was like in oh. the middle. And he would come all the way from Queens to pick me up, then pick up George, because George lived on Cortona Avenue right yeah. off of Tremont. And then from there, we would drive it to Music Unlimited uh, Studios, which was located in, I believe, Williamsbridge Road. Uh, right Chester. off of Pelham uh, Parkway, on, uh, East, Chester. East Chester Road, East, East Chester, Chester Road. East Chester Road, right off of Pelham Parkway. Then from there, drive us back home, and then from there, he would drive back to Queens. Damn. <laughs>
crazy shit. Yeah, man. Hardcore shit. Yeah. That shows. That shows his dedication. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Wow. And where did you go from there uh, after um, Alpha Blood? What was uh, Alpha Blood? Um, I wanted to put this out there too because Alpha Blood did play with you guys and go to Memphis. We played at the Blue Frog in the Bronx. Rest in peace. Yeah, a yeah. Blue Frog was more like a bluesy, jazzy venue for those who don't know. That was located at the end of the Four Train at the Woodlawn Train Station, right? Yep. Not too had, far had from that, Woodlawn had Cemetery. A, had that Blue Frog right on the top. Yeah, of yeah. The- like you know how the gargoyles. How yeah, are going to see in the side of the building? They would have like these two blue stone frogs on top, right by the uh, the corner of the of, of the building, and um, we played that show with you guys. Um, Milton, rest in peace. He was there. What you gonna call it? My mom Dukes went to that show. Yeah, my, wow. my mom not Dukes. That, and it's yeah. funny because that shoot that show turned out a little violent during our set. I remember Martin, who was your vocalist at the time. I remember him going up on stage while we were playing. He goes, yo, motherfuckers that got a knife in the pit, better cut that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody had pulled out a blade because we were called out for blood. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. We recorded a two-song or maybe even, maybe even a three-song demo at Chango Production Music Studio at Bronin's in the Bronx. Mm. Mm. Bronis had a little music studio like in the back on um upstairs and it was run by Rocky. Remember Rocky? Yeah, yeah, I remember Rocky. Rocky and this other Spanish dude. He looks like one of those Fania All-Star Salcedo type of dudes. <laughs> it was run by them. And we recorded like a three-song demo, I remember, at Chango Production Studio. Nice. Yeah, 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 which was cool. After all for blood, fast forward. I wanted to do something different because I was getting more into like punk rock and oi and stuff like that. And I was a skinhead at the time. And I teamed up with Rui. Shout out to Rui, Portuguese Rui, who used to live on Tremont. Tremont Avenue, right off the right off the Grand Concourse. That was like the metalhead punk rock hangout. That's what we in the Bronx at the time. Yeah, that was that was like the spot. And Rui happened to live in that building there. And Rui was more, he was more of a punk rock guy. Yeah, he was. And me and him connected and um, started hanging out a lot until we decided to form a band. And uh, we were like, yo, let's form this band. Let's do something different. Um, Everybody was doing metal and hardcore. So we decided to do uh, punk rock. So we had, we, we, we formed the Wasted and we gave it more of a punk rock oi touch. And uh, he was cool with, with, with Jesse, which I believe you used to go to the same high school. Yeah, he Mary? was. Yeah. Jesse mm-hmm. Rivera. Yeah. He, to Smith, was it? Smith High School. Smith High School. Smith High School. Well, at the time, Jesse was working, I believe, like a camp counselor in a camp. And at the time, uh, we had needed a drummer. But, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm all over the place. Before that, we had Frankie. Because Frankie lived... And the other side of Trima. He lived right down the hill. Down the hill of Trima, yeah. which is, what, what street was that? Uh, uh, that's that's Tremont. <laughs> that was Tremont. Tremont went down the hill. That was Tremont? Yeah, that really? was Tremont. Yeah, that was Tremont. He lived right down so the hill. So Roy knew Frankie at the time, because I think I, I met Frankie through you. Yeah. I think we were going to the movies one day. We were going to the movies one day, and that's, I think, yeah, I met Frankie through you. So anyway, we recruited, we recruited Frankie. He was our first drummer. And we had Jesse. Jesse used to live on University Avenue as well, right off of Fordham, not too far from me. And um, us four, we got together, and um, the Wasted was born. We did a couple. We did a bunch of shows all over the Bronx. We'll get into that uh, into that as well. And uh, yeah, so it was Frankie on drums, me on bass, Rui on vocals, and Jesse on lead and rhythm guitar. I remember, you guys uh, were on a couple of builds. A lot of Bronx shows and um, a couple of shows where it was like all mixed, like hardcore. Um, and but you guys were always like the standout little punk boy. Yeah, because we were the only band that was doing something, you know, different punk and shit like yeah. that. Um, yeah. We we uh we wanted to get together, especially there was this one band that was also from the Bronx that not a lot of people know about. They had more of a street punk. Oi Edge, and that band was called Terminal Buzz, which featured um, Bones. Bones was on bass, and Bones was this Puerto Rican punk rock dude. 
um, that was in that band, he passed away yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, and um, we wanted to do something in reference to that. So shout out to Terminal Buzz, shout out to Mel, Melvin, Melvin Truant, who was part of that band as well. And that was one of the reasons why, too, that band was formed, not only because me and Rui were into punk rock, but we were fans of that band. And we be, we also respected those dudes, which was also Tommy. Remember Tommy, right, Barry? Tommy? Tommy? Tommy Bodrero, I believe his last name was. And he was part of that Terminal Buzz clique, although he wasn't in the band, but he was part of the entourage that would hang out with that band or whatever. And uh, yeah, man, The Waster was born. And uh, sad, uh, we, we had a bunch of shows. We played the Train Depot in the Bronx. Yeah. Uh, we played with Blackout. Shout out to Blackout. Um, we played, uh, what was that girl's name? On, I believe, Kristen Avenue, was it? Valentine. Uh, Valentine Candy. Avenue? Candy. Candy. Shout out yeah, to we Candy. Did that, we did the show. We all did that show together. In the uh, apartment. We did that show in her apartment. And while we were playing, the cops came. Oh. While we were playing. And it's funny because in our set list, we had a song called ACAB, All Cops Are Bastards, <laughs> which is a cover song from an oi band called The Foreskins. Mm -hmm. And I remember Rui looking at me, and this is while Candy and then we're trying to get the whole thing situated. Like, yo, we're not, you know, because people were complaining about the noise. And a bunch of kids were actually moshing in the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> they were even diving off the, what do you call that, the, the, the thing? Would they give steam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old the school thing, radiator. Yeah, yeah, the radiator. Right. The school, they were yeah, jumping right. off of that <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. Remember back in the day when you had to hit it so the super can hear it? Yeah, the yeah. Super can get hit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what You're what funny in unison. <laughs> yeah. So what you gonna call it on? Oh there were God. kids actually diving off of that shit, bro. I, I'm looking back at that shit, guys, and I'm like, yo, we were wild, bro. That was fun. <laughs> do a show it was a in an apartment, in an apartment, and have kids moshing in the fucking sala because that shit was uh, in the living room. Yo, and, yeah. and the best part about that I remember was that uh, Candy's mom was all for it. Yeah, yo, she was she was cool about it. She was an old school uh, Puerto Rican lady. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. But she was all up. She loved. She was. Uh, she was all up. She was there in the front. She would be. Yeah, bro. She was regulated. She went to go deal with the cops and everything too. Yeah, real man, it was lady, cool, man. It was, man. It was real cool. Real sweet and, lady. And uh, I can't believe, man, we, we played that show. That, that was a lot of fun. We also did Blackthorn, and I believe you guys were on the bill. Yeah, we played with Blackthorn, too. We played uh, Blackthorn back when it was on Bainbridge. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the whole Nikki Cab shit. Um, <laughs> we were on the bill to play Mulali, BMX Park. But unfortunately, we didn't get to play that show. A whole big, it was a whole big mess going on that day. And um, which one was it? The first one or the second one? Oh man, because uh, the second one was the sick of it all one, right? Not the, fir the yeah, first. Yeah, the sick one. of it all. That's no, the one we were supposed so to play. So the second one, okay. The second, the, the sick of the it all. The ninety six one. one, right? That was ninety six or ninety five. Uh, ninety six, I believe. Yeah. Ninety six. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that show is on my YouTube channel, folks. So for you guys want to see that show, that's the one I, I told you. That's the one I took my son to when he was a year old. Mm. And yeah, and, and and freaking Lou, man, Lou was so fucking cool. I I, I show he, he was like, oh, that's you brought your son, and he had the whole band sign his stuff. Real, he loved it. I met. Yeah, his shout out to Lou Kohler, man, who was just going through you know some tough times with cancer and all that. So uh, shout out to Lou Kohler for real, for real. One yeah, of my man. favorite, you know, hardcore bands. One of the first hardcore bands that I got into. Sick of it all, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. The yeah. the blood uh, blood sweat and no tears uh, and no tears. tears. Uh, yeah. yeah, on cassette. I had it on cassette. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So then, once you got out of the wasted, um, that's did abject come up or did you have so, anything? Else? I left the wasted. They kept on. Now, when Frankie left the band, we recruited. We recruited Adam Fatchler. Adam Fatchler was one of those kids that were in the camp that Jesse Rivera, the guitar player, was a camp counselor in, and he recruited Adam Fatchler. Adam Fatchler, he's uh he's one of the the ones that kind of started or was in the same clique. Uh, to start uh, uh, 
the Hunts Point shows. Remember those Hunt Point shows was back in the early 2000s? What was it called? The, mm-hmm. Was it called the Bronx Underground? The something? Point? The Bronx Underground. Yeah, it was called the, the Bronx, Bronx Underground. Bronx, I think yeah. he was involved in that. I'm not sure. Adam. So Adam uh, was drumming for us, and we did a couple of shows with Adam. We played um, we played Yonkers, where everybody gets hurt. We played with Awkward Thought. Awkward Thought is a real good hardcore band, which features the bass player of No Redeeming Social Value, yeah. John Franco. John yeah. Franco also used to work at Rock and Rex Record Store in Yonkers back in the 90s. Nice. He plays in Awkward Thought. So we played with them at a church. I forgot what church in Yonkers. It was some church that even the priest was chilling in the mix. And he was really? just there chilling, checking us out, having a good time. He oh, was like, no, this is good stuff. It's all right. It's good stuff. It's not satanic. Or it's cool. You know, but he was mad cool. They're checking us out. He was probably, um, probably Irish. We played, <laughs> we played at, a, at a spot called the, the Sanitarium in Yonkers. And we played with Bottom of, of a, with a, with a uh, an oi band called Bottom of the Barrel. I believe Rights Reserved was on the bill. Oh, Rights Reserved. Uh-huh. They were on the bill. Uh, who else? I forgot who else. But we did that show as well. The show that we did in Yonkers at the sanitarium, I remember because on our way back home, I had said this story to the when I did the interview with um the Bronx uh, Historical Society. Um, I was uh, I was drinking Bacardi Limon. At that time, Bacardi came out with this liquor called Bacardi Limon. Remember that Bacardi yeah, yeah. Limon? Yeah. They didn't. They yeah. don't have it no more, right? I don't. I I, I I don't know to be honest with you. I don't know, but during that time, that's around the time we came out. Uh-huh. So I remember I had like a good seven of the little bottles in my pocket. So as we were playing in between songs, I was taking swigs, taking quick shots of that shit. So by the end of our set, when we were going home, I was done. So I remember Adam, the drummer's mom, Dukes, had picked us up. And when we was on the highway, I believe we was on the Deegan. When we was on the highway, I was telling Rui in the back seat, yo, my man, yo, I got a hurl, Rui. And we was like, nah, man, we're almost home. Just try to hold it till we get home, bro. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm about to blow chunks up with this motherfucker. <laughs> it was kind of like the Wayne's World. Remember Wayne's World? That Wayne's World oh, scene? Yeah. That, that, yeah. that, that, that was, was really the wasted. Yeah, I was, I was wasted. <laughs> so Adam's mom, Dukes, sure enough, she pulled over to the side of the highway. Yo, man, I was hurling chunks. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that shit was looking like remember the blob, the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> that shit looked like that, like that. Bro. Like, oh, that shit was oozing. Oh man, good times, bro. Good times, man. That was with the wasted, unfortunately. So, um, after the wasted, the guys kept on. They and they formed a band called, I believe, Grave Radio. Grave yes, Radio. Yes, yeah, yeah, I heard, yeah. Like and yeah, it was yeah. more. They gravitated more towards like horror punk. Yeah, like, like the Misfits. Like, like Misfits, Misfits and stuff yeah. like that. Good shit, too, bro. And they and they teamed up with uh, this kid, uh, Tony Anthony. We used to call him Misfit. You yeah, probably I know him, Misfit. Misfit. Yeah, I remember Misfit. And, and they teamed up with him after I had left. And um, I, be, I believe they recorded a couple of songs or whatever. And um, but by then, I put down the bass because then I started going to a lot of Spanish clubs with my older sister. Because my, my older sister was like, you know what? Give that fucking heavy metal white boy shit a break. <laughs> come, st- start, come, come to clubs with me. I am gar- uh, guarantee you're going to have a good time. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. So I cleaned up my look. You know what I'm saying? Got on my papi chulo shit. And for, for a hot minute, I started going to Spanish clubs, believe it or not, <laughs> during that time. I would go yeah. to spots like Jet Set Cafe in the Bronx. I would go to a spot in the Heights called Studio 84. Not Studio 54. <laughs> Studio 84. Yeah. And um, they would be giving a lot of shit like merengue, salsa, bachata, reggaeton, and Latin house. But I would be like, yo, I'm having a good time because there was one thing that these clubs had that hardcore punk and metal clubs really didn't have as much. And you know what, what was that? Mad women. Mad women. women. Yeah, mad <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I had to... You know, get my my dance game <laughs> on and shit, cause I'm not that much of a good dancer. You know what I'm saying? So, um, my sister was like, "Don't worry about it. I'll teach you how to dance salsa, merengue, and bachata, and all that." And sure enough, man, you know, 
I learned how to get my little dance on and shit. And, and I would go to these Spanish clubs for, during that time more than I would go to like metal and, and hardcore and punk shows. But that was only for a short ter- uh, period of time because then I had the itch again and I started going again to hardcore punk and metal shows again. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, man, hopefully, hopefully you had a good time with the women during that period of time. But always you, you, you gravitate back to what you feel in your oh, heart. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, what's funny. Um, I got to see a lot of, like, Spanish acts, groups. Like, I saw um, Tito Roja before, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he passed away. I saw him at Jimmy's piece. Bronx Cafe. Remember Jimmy's wow. Bronx Cafe? Yep, yes. yep. I saw Tito Roja. I saw a bunch of merengue groups. Like, um, remember Oro Solido? Yeah. Oro Solido. Oro who? Salido. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Oro Solido, fucking La Banda Gorda, a whole bunch of merengue groups and salsa groups and shit like that. Yeah, because they used time. to play all in like small places or even in, in like uh, Lehman College or they yeah. played over, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe uh, had all a the lot time. of shows. Yeah, and Hell good yeah. food too. Hell yeah. yeah, and then they'll play those spots like El Valle, you know, those Spanish <laughs> Dominican <laughs> spots, Carida Restaurant, they'll play in the yeah. back and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, but yeah, I had a good time, man. It was it was a fun time. But then I had the itch again, guys. And I had mm-hmm. to go back to the metal hardcore and punk shows again, man. And then from there, uh, you know, the rest was history. Yes. Wow. And and, yeah. and along with all the the women that came with it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> back Absolutely. to looking at balls, that balls and genitals <laughs> all over the place. Uh, what they uh, so, uh, what, what they say, sausage party? Sausage party. <laughs> Sausage fest. <laughs> Sausage fest. <laughs> wow, man. So, so you started going back out, and uh, around what year would you say that was that you really got deep again into the scene? Um, like uh, late late nineties again. Late yeah, nineties. Now, so- keep in mind, during that time too, I became a dad because <laughs> hey, shut up. That's my doggy. Don't mind my doggy. Oh, shit. Duke. Uh-huh. Not to say um, he said he's about to be a dad. I was like, yo, you're telling your daughter to shut damn man. <laughs> hey, my dog is also a metalhead, too. <laughs> my dog is a metalhead. Well, yeah. you already know about my cat, so you know he back there chilling. Nah, your cats are black metal cats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Black metal cats. Richie, you don't you don't got no pets? Nah, nah, I don't have any. I huh? had goldfish when I was younger, fish, but they're gone. Nah, <laughs> not even parakeets. Nah, Puerto, nah. Puerto Ricans are known to have parakeets. I got a parrot at work, but it's a co-worker that's on my shoulder all the time. I call him the parrot because he wants to talk all the time. Ah. Yo, he doesn't need pets, Chucky. He lives in, he's over in Manhattan. He's got all the pets outside, all the fucking oh, yeah, yeah, people running around. You know? too, man. Yeah. Yep, yep. He, he, can, he can leave breadcrumbs on his windowsill and have all those fucking New York pigeons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so going back to the shit, um, at the same time I would go to these shows, I would always record. Mm-hmm. I started recording shows, I want to say, 92, from 92 to now, because till, uh, till this day, I still record shows. But I started, I want to say, 1992. Yeah, that's how you were doing, like, a lot of the, the Wetland shows, Bond Street shows. I did um Wetlands, CBGB. Coney Island High, ABC No Real, uh, the Continental, the Pyramid, um, Bond Street Cafe, Bond Street Cafe, even the Train Depot in the Bronx. Um, mm-hmm. d- dude, uh, a bunch, man, a bunch of shows, man, a bunch yeah. of shows. It's funny. I-, I-, I was talking about this with Joe. Shout out to Joe Rampage. Um, where in some of these videos you see that I move the camera towards the crowd. And when you look at the crowd, you get to see like the next generation of bands, even Pretty of the much. dudes, yeah, in the crowd. You know, saying you see the 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 uh, Louis, who's your your bassist, yeah, who, who did Dead Season, Go to Mensis. You see Phil Vibes, who did Irate. You even see Lou, who works with um, well, at the time, who worked with uh, BMX, uh, Mulali. Yeah. In the crowd. So you see the next generation as I'm moving the camera towards the crowd of all these old shows from the from the 90s, which is which is crazy. I was talking to Joe Rampage about that, which is kind of cool, too, man, to see. Go back and look at that footage and be like, oh, shit, that's basically the next generation of bands 
that's that's gonna form, you know, and and whatnot. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Wow. Yeah. And then for anybody who would like to uh, re relive some of the memories that Chucky just spoke about and, and that treasure trove of footage, they could go to Chucky Brown's Hood TV, which is on YouTube. And um, there's a lot of full shows. There's segmented shows. And there's also behind the scenes footage that he would just film yeah. of the people in the crowd. Um, and, and you see, like Chucky said, a lot of them went on to do bands and a lot of them were big scene uh, people. But also, it's, guys, um, also, I don't mean to cut you off, Richie. No, no, no go also, ahead. Um, yeah. In the mid-90s, there used to be this public access show. Unfortunately, they used to not give it in the Bronx, but it was uh, you could see it in Manhattan. And I had a buddy of mine who was also a metalhead that lived in, in Manhattan at the time. And that's how I was able to find out about this public access show. The show was called Psycho TV. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, my boy used to record it and then lend me the videotape. And I would see all these shows that we used to be on this public access show. And it was mostly punk, hardcore, metal, oi, and ska. And I'm like, oh. yo. So they, I remember they had a P.O. box. Remember a P.O. box? Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I wrote to them and I ended up being I ended up being buddies with the, the guy who used to uh, run the show, which is uh, uh, Sid the Kid. Oh, and yeah. he used to run Psycho TV. Sid the Kid is also a DJ. He, do, he DJs uh, a lot at shows. And he, he also is a bass player. He's a bass player for a, a, a punk oi band called United Blood. He mm -hmm. used to be in a punk band called Zombie Vandals. Yeah, Zombie Vandals, which is wow. another good punk uh, punk band. Z when Zombie Vandals broke up, the singer, he's in a goth band called Blue Blue Anxiety, which which is really good, too. Wow. But, um, so I linked up with Sid the Kid, and whenever I wanted to dance at shows, he would record. Whenever he <laughs> wanted to dance at shows, I would record. And me and him would record shows, and I would help out. Uh, which with certain shows that I would uh document for his show Cycle TV, and for the stuff for my collection that I would have as well that which later would would, would become Chucky Brown's Hood TV. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. really a great channel. Um, it's almost like a Ken's Death Trip, but for like the New York scene of like a uh, punk, oi, ska, um, uh, hardcore, um, all of that stuff, like. That, that's the old, the thing I've always appreciated about you, that you've always been diverse in all the scenes, but yeah, the channel, man, I... you know, it's it's something that, that a lot of those tapes are, like, some people lost them or they're erased or they're gone, but you were smart enough to upload them and, and preserve them. Yeah, man, and, and, and some of these stuff were not just regular videotape. Some of these were on VHS-C. Which yeah. is a smaller the videotape, yeah. yeah. And then that videotape, you put it in the air in the original size videotape to fit, yeah. so that you'll be able to watch it on a VCR. Um, yeah. yeah, I had tons of that stuff. Unfortunately, I had more. I had a lot more stuff, but a lot of that stuff got you know got lost from moving or down the line when I got evicted or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Back when I was young and shit. And um, or somewhere, my mom Dukes would take my videotapes and tape over my shit with novelas and shit like that. <laughs> like in Maria del Barrio and all the stupid shit. She was but, getting you back for what you did. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yo, no, no, you're right. You're, <laughs> like, hey, que esto, man, bro? No, ahora, la vida. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. But um, yeah, guys, I got a lot of good stuff, man. Um, I got a like, uh, all out war early stuff. All out war early stuff. Um, confusion. Fucking uh, a close call, which later on turned out to be District Nine. On the punk side, I got the casualties, um, a bunch of stuff, man, that I could go yeah. back and I'd be like, holy shit, you know, members gone, either dead, broke up, you yeah. know, and yeah, a lot of classic good and, stuff, man. And aside to being a, an an archivist of video. You also um, are a, a, a big collector. I mean, I know you have a lot of cassettes, a lot of CDs, a lot of seven inches and all that. Oh, hell yeah, but, man. Um, what, what are some of the treasures that, that you still have in your collection that, that, that you know, that come off the top? Oh, of the man, I got a bunch of shit, man. I, wish, <laughs> I mean, I could grab stuff, but I would have to, you know, get out the camera or whatever. But um, nah, just uh, quiet riot, a metal <laughs> health. 
which I know you got recently, Barry. Oh, my goodness, man. You know how happy I was to get that shit, man. I had to get that, bro. I mean, those were one of the albums that you look at the cover and you would have fucking I'm going to buy it because I ain't going to front, man. I had a couple of uh, a couple of albums that I bought that were a bunch of downers, man. And I'm like, (laughs) and you know, which was one of them. Sadly, it was Anvil. Oh, yeah, you like Anvil? Dude. Yeah, I bought one of their albums. And I was like, eh. But ah, it was man, like live. You, it was a live album, and I'm not a fan of live albums. Mm. Oh, the only live album I think I like is SOD Live at Budokan. It's the only live yeah. album I think I like. Fuck <laughs> Kiss. Fuck the Kiss live album. No, Fuck. No. Oh, actually, um, the Nirvana Unplugged album is, is pretty good, too. Believe uh-huh. it or not. No, no. The Unplugged man. album. And don't Nirvana? forget to go to That's Mentor's good. 2005 and CBGB's greatest live ever. Oh, yeah. That shit's off the Monteca rack, son. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Word up. <laughs> Word up. Yeah. Um, the Rat out of the cellar. Uh, Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry. Believe it or not, guys, I was in a big Venom fan. So I didn't okay. care much for that. Uh, what was it? Black, uh, black Metal? That black yeah, metal album that everybody the hell black metal, yeah. I was it too. I was it too crazy about Venom. I was more of a Slayer. You know, everybody yeah. likes fucking Slayer. Uh, yeah. Possessed. I I loved Possessed. Possessed uh-huh. was my shit. Um, what other fucking banger? Kill 'em all. The Kill 'em all shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What, well, if what, it's what, Kill 'em all. What, what was one of your bigger um biggest first concerts that you remember? That that you were like, oh shit. Uh, uh, the Clash of the Titans, bro. Oh, oh shit. Clash of the, the Titans, I was G. there. Fucking wow. Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, Alice in Chains. And believe it yeah. or not, I was into Alice in Chains at that time, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you great... know, Alice in yeah. Chains, although, you know, they get that alternative grunge uh, thing, I, I always see them that. as a dark, you know, those lyrics and that music, bro. That shit, that shit is dark, bro. Yeah, I, yeah I, real I, for I real. I consider them uh, no grunge band. They were to me like they, they were like a updated Black Sabbath type shit. For right? Me. Yeah, yeah. Like like your your friend that that's into like sludge and stoner shit could easily get into Alice in Chains. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. But um, oh, yeah. yeah, man, I fucking that that show. You know, with motherfuckers ripping seats, yo, throwing M80s. Like yo, who does <laughs> that, bro? Uh, jumping jacks from where I was sitting at yeah. this point. Jumping jacks. Remember the jumping jacks? <laughs> Doing that yeah, shit, yeah. firecrackers. Yo, I had a great time. Great fucking show. Um, I believe Anthrax pulled out Public Enemy, right? For um, yeah, in Madison, they did. They did. Uh, yeah, noise. yeah, they did. What's the name of that song? Um, bring the noise. Bring the, bring noise. the noise. Yeah, bring the noise. and yeah, I was yeah. a big, big fan of that, guys, because being a uh, not just a metalhead but a hip hop head. You know, I was always one of those that whenever I see rap and metal mix, I, I love that shit. Like even going back to Anthrax with Rum DMC, seeing that as a little kid, I got blown away, you know, with the walk this way thing. That was Aerosmith. What was it? Well, who was I said? Aerosmith. That was Aerosmith for Rum DMC, not Anthrax. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Aerosmith and, 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 and Rum DMC. And then later on seeing yes, Anthrax. Yes, sigue fumando, sigue fumando. I know, I know, I know. That's... <laughs> Paiso <laughs> fuma, paiso bebe, paiso bebe. So, yo, um, but Chucky also the Judgment Night soundtrack. Oh yeah, of that course. Was a, oh that man, was, that was a fantastic. big one. So yeah. that's what I was getting at. You know, seeing Aerosmith from DMC, then seeing Anthrax with uh with Public Enemy, and then down the line, that Judgment Night soundtrack. Oh, forget it, man. That shit fucking blew me away. The movie Hearing was fucking... garbage. The movie was garbage. I, the no, soundtrack was great. Actually, I liked the movie. Nah, that movie wasn't good. <laughs> I fucking liked the movie, but I'm a type of dude that I love Chud. I love fucking <laughs> basket. Ca- I love cheesy movies. No, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong with, but it's just the, the movie wasn't good. <laughs> It just wasn't. Uh, I, 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 I like. I like it. it just wasn't um, a good movie. It's funny because I actually met this guy at a hardcore show. The actor, um, not this guy. I'm an asshole. He's an asshole. Not him. Uh, what's his name, bro? He was in oh. Pulp Fiction. Oh, remember oh. Pulp Fiction when yeah. he when they ran into the electronic store when one guy was like a cop, I think. Oh shit! What's his name, dude? I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm man. stuck right now. 
Shit, man. Uh, what the uh, fuck? And come, man. Yeah, yeah, you not know what? Dennis Leary. Not Dennis oh, Leary. Not, oh, damn. Um, it was the guy. I believe he was a Judgment Night, bro. He was a, he he was like the villain dude. I can't get it right now, man. It's Damn, man, with... what's his name, bro? I, it'll come, but it'll I come I, back. Oh, you know the line, somebody I... leave it in the comment section. Like if, <laughs> yeah. when, when we finish with this shit, leave it down in the, the line. Comment. I ended up meeting him at the at the at the Bowery Electric. No, not uh-huh. the Bowery, not the Bowery Electric. Um, the A Seven, Niagara. Oh. Yep. At the Niagara, a, um, aka nice. the A Seven Club. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I forgot what the fuck was I saying. I forgot. What the fuck. <laughs> well, we went from you were talking about rap and stuff like that, but you know what? Uh, let let let's just uh, let's get back to this part that we were trying to get to you with your band, bro, because you went from at, like Abject. Like, oh yeah, I'd be all over the place. My bad, guys. All yeah, right, all right. Oh, man, abject, so uh, uh, talk about Abject a little. Okay, so Abject, uh, I believe oh. Abject was formed, was it, I want to say 2011. I want to say 2011 to like maybe 2014, 2015. But an, an Abject, um, that was a fun band. Uh, that was formed with Jamie Hammer. Jamie Hammer used to be the singer for a band called Dealing With It. Dealing With It. Yeah, and um, after Abject broke up, he formed a band called Close to the Edge. So look, look that up in, um, in Bandcamp. Okay. Good, authentic, old school hardcore. Nice. But anyway, there was one day I was walking down Broadway. There's this diner on Broadway. I forgot the name of that diner. And in the parking lot, I bumped heads with um with Jamie. He was there hanging out with this this rapper who goes by the name of Omega Jackson. Shout out to Omega yeah. Jackson. Shout out to Jamie Hammer. And I remember um I had came out to him. Hey, what's up, guys? And he was like, yo, listen, I'm trying to form something down the line. We exchanged numbers. And... He ended up finding this guitar player who's originally from Washington, D.C. Uh, shout out to Matt. Matt Gel, uh, Gel, I forgot his last name. Gelsel, Gelsel some shit. Also known as Madikins. He's originally from Washington, D.C. Uh, he plays guitar now for a band called Ache. Ache. Uh, A-C-H-E. Yeah. With, Ache. With Ryan. with Ryan Bland. Shout out to Ryan Bland. <laughs> who, used to bo- who used to be in Home 33. Remember Home 33, Barry? Yes, home I do. 33? And, yeah. and before that, Bushman. Yeah, right, 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 right. So we got together, and it was me on bass, Jamie on vocals, Matt on guitar, and Chris from Brooklyn on drums. And we formed the Abject, and uh, when Chris when Chris left the band, we got uh, Shuffles. Shuffles is also the drummer of Dealing With It. And then he he formed the band. The first drummer left the band back when we got arrested because the whole band had got arrested. Yeah, I remember that. I was talking about the seven inch. Yeah, which <laughs> there we 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 have a seven inch. We we got an EP called Thirty Nine Hours in Bronx Central Booking. I might ha- I might have it here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Here, let me show you guys. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, this is it. Yep, yep. Uh huh. This is actually the front yeah. of uh, Central Booking on 161st yep. over there and right off the concourse in the Bronx. So this bad boy got uh, three songs. I mean, no, no, no. Six songs. My bad. Six songs on this EP is up on all streaming services. Uh, <laughs> it's also a glow-in-the-dark vinyl. This is a glow-in-the-dark nice. vinyl. That's dope, man. Uh, there it goes. That's the four train. See the four train? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually drew that. Um, the whole EP is basically based on a whole and on, on a true story. Long story short, we were on our way to band practice, believe it or not, because we were supposed to play a show in Washington, D.C. that Matt had hooked up, the guitar player. On our way to pick up the drummer and Matt, we used to pick them up right by where the Blue Frog was at. Mm-hmm. On the four train, the last stop. So we picked the guys up. Long story short, as we're driving away, we see these four guys that got pulled over by these undercover cops. One of the guys had this shirt on that I thought it was a bad brain shirt. Unfortunately, it was a shirt that said like Jamaica and it looked like a bad brain shirt. <laughs> and as we were driving away, the same cops that had pulled those guys over pulled us 
us over. So they 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 got us out of the car, whatever. Long story short, they planted, I don't know if it was crack, coke, and weed in the car. So we sued, we won the case, and thus the EP was born. 39 mm-hmm. hours and brought such a booking. Great. So the whole album is based on that particular night. We even have we have a song called Dope Shit in Jail, which in the ending of that song, you're gonna hear Matt actually taking a shit. You guys go back and, and, and listen to the song Don't Shit in Jail from Abject. In the ending of the song, you're gonna hear Matt actually taking the shit. And it's a real recording of him taking a shit. Creamy, very creamy. Ah. <laughs> very creamy. And the end of on the outro to that song. So the whole EP is basically based on a true story on what happened on that particular night with my old band Abject. So definitely check that out. Amazing. Damn, Amazing. Yeah. And, Down the line. Super, go ahead. Uh, no, I was gonna say super quick. I I admire the uh artwork of the graffiti. I noticed that 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 the graffiti was was thrown in there. Who was the artist on that one? Oh, I did that. I did that. As a matter of that fact, here's another. Dope. Yeah, here's, that came out dope. This is the last uh album that we did, and we put it out on Dead City Records, which again John Franco uh owns the guy from No Redeem and Social Value, Awkward Thought. And we put this was the last uh bad boy that we put out. Uh 12 bangers on this. This is the best stuff that I think I put uh we put out as abject. And that's uh, one of the logos that I drew for the band. That's one of the logos. Nice. And I have mm-hmm. another one. This is our first album, Try Again. And that's the first logo that I did for the band. And this was the first album that we put out called Try Again. You're going to yep. see a resume with a bunch of newspaper clippings with the Mad Dog. Remember the Mad Dog? uh uh, uh, liquor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the first album, also out there for your listening uh pleasure, and this one's called Try Again. This nice. one got uh ten, ten, ten uh ten tracks. Nice. On this one, this is the first oh. abject album. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, uh, so, so then um, tell people who don't know that are not from New York about Crazy Eddie. And I'm not talking about the band, but Crazy Eddie, the the character, like yeah, like, like 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 yeah, that's like that's yeah. That was gonna be like one of my things. Like I you know, I get the whole concept of calling the band Crazy Eddie, and actually, but what what transpired with that as far as the name and and the the, the mascot himself? Well, me and the guys, we wanted to think of something like no, you know, something from like old school from our era. You know what I'm saying? So you had, of course, the 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 corporate. Fucking electronic store, Crazy Eddie. And mm-hmm. you know the whole story on that with the whole tax evasion, the, the CEO, whatever. And not only that, we would go and buy our records at the record uh, at Crazy Eddie. Also, during that time, there used to be a PCP, an illegal substance out, uh, some form of an angel dust called yeah. Crazy Eddie as well. So being that that all played a part, uh, you know, something old school within our era. So thus, we, we came up with the name, Cra- you know, Crazy Eddie. Um, we also wanted uh, uh, like a band mascot. Sort of like, you know, the whole Milo of the Descendants, the Fiend of the Misfits, yeah. the DRI machine guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the skanking guy of the Circle Jerks, uh, the, the four bar flag of Black Flag, uh, you know, hardcore punk always had this thing where they have like either a little mascot or some type of design, like Dead Kennedys with the DK. So, thus we took, we jacked, right there he goes, that's Cholo Eddie. So we jacked <laughs> the Crazy Eddie character and we added in our touch, you know, and we caught, we, we, uh, we gave him like the whole Cholo uh, vibe going on. We gave him the Pendleton button down shirt with the flip cap you know what I'm saying <laughs> and shit like that and Cholo Eddie was born shout out to Dave Borges Dave Borges was the guy who um who drew the original crazy Eddie uh character and that one that Richie the one that you put up shout out to Steve Huey Steve Hugh 
he's the one that drew that cover. Steve Hugh is also known to be drawing things for Mad Ball. He's the one who drew the Mad Ball character. Oh, okay. The That's Mad Ball the character with the ball, cigar. Yeah. He drew that Crazy Eddie logo. If you can hold it up again, Richie. I think I, I might have it here. Yeah, I think I have it. Yeah. So Steve Hugh did the Crazy Eddie logo and this version of Cho of the Cholo Eddie for this particular nice. EP. Yeah. Shout out to uh uh Tony from Rock and Rex because we put this out on Rock and Rex Records, this EP. That's dope. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So shout and out to it, Stephen Hugh. And it's great music. Uh Thank short you, man. hardcore punk old school style songs, one after another. Thank they don't you, take bro. themselves that serious. Um, it's just about having fun. Yes, and sir. you guys played a lot of shows uh for the last couple of years, um, on a, on a lot of bills too. Yeah, man. Um, I'm happy to say, bro, we played a uh a, a lot of venues, and a lot of venues that slowly but surely are closing down. Rest in peace to St. Vitus, yep. and just recently, rest in peace to the Kingsland. Wow, I, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it to the Kingsland. Happened. Yeah, yeah just man. recently, I believe they're gonna do their own last run of shows, and then wow. I believe uh that's Damn. it. If I'm not mistaken. That's like yeah, one bro. Spot I was looking to try to get a show at, man. That's mm -hmm. fucked up. Yeah, so I believe they're they they have uh, two other spots. I believe the Brooklyn Monarch, yeah, TVI. I don't know one of those Brooklyn the Meadows. Venues. The Meadows, I believe the yeah. Meadows. I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah, so we got to play the Kingsland. We got to play St. Vitus. Um, we got to play with uh, Outburst. We got to I... play with Sheer Terror. We Great. got to play with the Templars. We yep. got to play with uh. Dude, with a bunch of bands, man. And not just hardcore. We play with metal bands. We play with oi bands and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, man, one one spot that uh, we always get a lot of love. Shout out to Drew Stone. Drew Stone is one of the guys that would book us whenever we would play at this particular venue. And that venue is the Bowery, the Bowery Electric. Oh, okay. Yes. In, in Manhattan. Uh, very, very fun venue. We love, that's like our home. If it wasn't the Niagara, a.k.a. the A7, it would be the Bowery Electric, nice. both upstairs and downstairs, because you could, um, the Bowery Electric, you could play upstairs or downstairs. I wanted to interrupt you for a second, Chucky, because that leads me to another thing that I forgot to bring up. Not only are you an archiver with Chucky Brown's Hood TV, you're in the band Crazy Eddie, but you're also part of the New York City Hardcore Chronicles. Yes, um, with helping uh, moderating, if you could talk just a little bit about that. Yeah. Um. Uh, what you call? I'm one of the guys that help. It, it's it's a team that helps run that page on Facebook. The head, uh, the head guy, of course, would be Drew Stone, but I'm one of the ones that also help out. And what I try to do is not only post on my page, which is Chucky Brown's Hood TV, but I would also help out and post stuff on that page as well. I'm one of those guys that like, if something happened up on a particular day and that day falls on this day, I would like to post it up. Hey, uh, such and such band played on this day at this particular venue. And I would like to post it on that particular day and not just post it on my channel, but on the New York hardcore Chronicles uh, channel as well. That's so true. for those who have Facebook, make sure to follow that page. And yep. you guys will be um, informed with a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, and not just hardcore, but punk, oi, and metal as well within the New York area. Sweet. And what Chucky does too is, is that he lets people know about what's coming up. He lets know people about tragic news, about uh, people that pass away in our, in oh, yeah, our community, yeah. in our scene. And he also... Uh, honors the legacy of past things with ticket stubs and flyers and oh, on man, yeah, this man. day and, and constantly reminding us so that we won't forget about classic moments that we had in our life. So it's, it's, uh, I definitely recommend uh, following that page, but also Chucky Brown hood TV uh, page and obviously the crazy Eddie page so that people know what's coming up with shows. Yeah. For those who want to follow um, the band page, uh, Crazy Eddie NYHC, New York Hardcore. And that's both for uh, Instagram and for Facebook. And for those that want to follow the Chucky Brown's Hood TV, I have it on YouTube, uh, Chucky Brown's Hood TV. 
Facebook, the same thing. And on Instagram, CB Hood TV. Well, exactly. thing, just uh, make sure you do me a favor. Send me uh, send me the links. So then when I'm ready to go and hook that, I can just throw this up in the description. Most stuff. Right Most stuff. Check it out. So you, can, you guys would just be able to check it out in the, in the description. Just click on it and you can get on with it with Chucky. Yep. No doubt. And, um, and I got one quick question for Chucky. Um, cause, cause sometimes people go to see Crazy Eddie, but they might not even know that Chucky's there because when they see the vocalist, they see a wrestling mask on. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the luchador. The wrestling. Um, yeah. I don't do it too much cause I don't want people to think that it's like some type of gimmick. According to whatever show we do, and I think it's right for me to wear it, I would wear it. If... Uh. Because sometimes I'll be like on that shit where I'll be like, hey, I don't feel like wearing it today. I'm just going to be on my regular shit and just do what I got to do. So it's according to whatever show that we're playing, then I'll wear it. Um, Yeah, man, I would just get into like this other like alter ego, you know, hence the name Crazy Eddie, where, you know, I'm half Mexican and I'm very big into my Mexican culture, whatever. And being the fact that loot and I'm a big fan of Lucha Libre, you know what I'm saying? I'm a big fan of American, you know, the whole WWE thing. I've been into it since the WWF days, you know, Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, all that bullshit. But being that I'm Mexican and I'm a big fan of Lucha Libre too, and being that I play in a hardcore punk band, I figured it was only right to uh, incorporate represent. that into and represent and, you know, and rock the mask every now and then. Every every once in a while, I like to change it up, you know what I'm saying? But um, I have fun and, you know, it is what it is. You and shout out to, to Phil Mascaris huh? and El Santo and all those mask rappers. Oh, yeah, yeah, most deaf. Yeah, most deaf. <laughs> I have. Because I'll be, rock, be rocking their masks, too, for these shows and shit like that. So, yeah, shout out to that. So cool. if you guys want to experience that, make sure you come to a Crazy Eddie show. <laughs> and I'll guarantee you, you will have a gustain. Chucky, uh, but this that this goes to that, then. Uh, I, it's it's just one one of each. One of each. What was the worst show? And what was the best show so far? Oh, man. Uh, good question. What was the worst show? Worst shows are usually the ones that you get there off the, off the top of your head. The best Damn, I'm trying you. to think, bro. Because there were... <laughs> oh, there have been a few. <laughs> Shit. Don't say it too loud, man. Don't say that too loud. <laughs> I'm trying to do... All right, well, let me say the good show because I'm trying to think of like the... One, of the... one of the best shows is like what I said at the Bowery Electric. Okay. Every time we play there, we have a great fucking time. Um, and not just us, the, the whole lineup, man, and that whole vibe, the whole atmosphere, that whole crowd, because it's a mixed crowd. You have your teenagers. You have your kids. Yeah, because they be all ages shows. So you have your kids. You have your teenagers. You have your 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 twenties. Your th- so even your sixty year olds, the OGs be up in the mix too, bro. The OGs. <laughs> Whenever we play the Barrio Electric. And Niagara, aka A7. All right. So the Niagara and the Barry Electric are one of the best shows that I could say Crazy Eddie will always gets love. The build, the show is always off the is always off the hook. All right. Now, as a matter of fact, there was a show I remember we played at the Barry Electric, and I um and I believe this guy uh what's his name the singer of Led Zeppelin. He was with his wifey just passing by one night. One day when we were playing at the Bar Electric, which was cool, you know. Uh, I grew up listening to Zeppelin, so you know. That was but cool. anyway, um, damn, one of the worst fucking shows. Uh, I don't want to say like worse or bad. I'm just gonna say where there was like the least people was probably at the at a place called the Harpin Bar in Clifton, New Jersey. Oh wow! Was it, it one was, of those? Was it one of those that, like, you know, you guys had it build where it looked like it was gonna be a lot of people, and then you went there it was like four or five. Yeah, a couple of heads. I, I mean, it was still a good show. We still had a good time. Whatever bands played, it was good. I believe um, uh, the car. Shout out to the Car Bomb Parade, great punk band. Um, they were they they were on the bill that night. Okay. And shout out to uh, Tim. Tim, who was the uh, he used to be the the guitar player in MOD. Oh, Tim, oh, yeah, yeah, he he booked that show. Okay, he booked that show, and um, uh, who else was on the bill? There was a band called Police Navidad. 
<laughs> Police Navidad. They're more like oyish. They're on the bill as well. And another band, uh, more, they're like metal. I remember them because they started bringing up all this high tech gear. Like these motherfuckers were going to play at a, at a stadium. I'm like, damn, dude, really? I think they were called Vedic or something like that. V E D I C, Vedic or something like that. But I, that's like uh, one show that I could say that I had like, this, thing, this next song's going out to Billy. Hey! <laughs> you know, one of those separate shows. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, I'm going to lead into an, to this other one then. That's it, that, well, we're going with that. If you had to pick one band, no, whatever genre, that you had an opportunity, they say, yo, Chucky, the waste, we need, not the way, uh, we need Crazy Eddie to open up this show with this band. What band would that be? Um, Any genre. Me? Any genre. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna stick to hardcore punk, being that that's what we play. So, if it's so, if we give you a million dollars to play Russia Metallica, you're not doing it. I mean, like, what? Oh no, 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 that too. Yeah, no, 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 that too. Of course, of course. But um, <laughs> I would say like, I mean, you know, it, it, you know, it's just it's sometimes people get thrown. It's uh, like you want to go and stick with your genre sometimes. And make right, it, right, right. But if there's like, if you guys have a unison, say uh, something outlandish, you can say, yo. Fucking Rob Harford from Judas Priest wants wants us to open up. I mean, and and two of you guys are like big time Judas Priest fans. Even though right. you stick to, you know, would that be something? Say, yo, you know, I, I would want to do that. Like something. Oh, like I, that. I was, to play with like um the band Fear. Remember that band that played in Saturday Night oh, Live? Wow. Yes. Yep. Fear. Uh, Black Flag. Okay. Um, okay. Off. You know the band Off. Yeah. 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 Off because it has members, you know, Keith, Keith, more, uh, and you know, all them, uh, bands like that, something that fits more like our genre, but like yeah. a bigger one of the the bands that started that shit, that yeah. Kennedys, uh, 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 you know, shit like that. We even, we even, um, shout out to Urban Waste, although the the only original member is the guitar player Johnny Waste. Yeah, I got I gotta shout them out because those were one of the first bands. That played that genre from the jump coming out of New York. They were there with the mob. They were there with fucking all of the first wave of hardcore punk coming out of uh of New York. And we yep. got to share the stage actually at the Kingsland. Oh with wow. um was it at the Kingsland? Yeah, I believe the Kingsland. So shout out to Urban uh 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 the Urban Waste guys. So nice. yeah, if you ask me that question, yeah, something like like fear, black flag. Dead Kennedy, Circle Jerks, shit like that. All right. Wow. I'm not gonna say Minor Threat because we all know that they. Okay. Get... So in in, in, in in bad brains, you know. One more thing. One more thing. Now this would be a personal thing for you. If you had an opportunity to fill in for one of the bands you've truly loved, which band would that be? Uh, to fill in like as a bass player. Whatever you want, singing, yeah, bass, uh, hmm, bachata, man. gongas, whatever the hell you want, bro. Whatever, man, that's gonna be whatever hard, you feel, bro. Cause... Whatever you want, you would go in there and say, "Yo, I, I want to do this. I, I, this is my favorite band ever, and I would have this opportunity to fill in." Damn, that's that's a hard question, bro. Because it's like I'm thinking metal, I'm thinking punk, I'm thinking hardcore, and I'm into all this fucking music. And it's like, if I think Meta- if I think metal, I'm saying Metallica because that's like. One of my all-time favorite bands. I mean, good, it is good. what you it could, is. So you could go in there and you kick fucking Lars out and um, get a real drummer uh, and bring back old Metallica again. That yeah, you could do that. <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah, well, suicidal tendencies. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, I'll say suicidal tendencies because I mean another band that started hardcore punk and then down the line went metal. Yeah. And suicidal tendencies known to have like ten thousand bass players anyway. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, is so, it uh, your son is playing bass for them now, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I say suicidal, suicidal tendencies. All right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right, yeah. man. Well, yo, but uh, uh, we're gonna be closing. Rich, you got anything else, man? Before we start uh finishing. Um. Up? Yeah, yeah. Again? We're gonna take it home. We talked about the past. Uh, we talked about the present. And maybe just one last thing was talk a little bit about the future. Like, uh, what, what, what do you possibly have in store? Like, is there are there any recordings or any shows or any tours or anything coming up that that uh that might be on the horizon that you can maybe talk about a little? Controversial um, pornos, whatever, bro. 
Okay, so we have. <laughs> we, uh, okay, so with Crazy Eddie, we're gonna we're gonna the band still continues. Jason Madrock, shout out on drums. Kevin Smith, shout out who just recently retired from the military. So shout out to Kevin after a Thank good you for your service, man. Thank you for. Your I want to say I want to say twenty five years. I'm not sure. Mm. Wow. Uh, shout out to Lenny B. Who you guys also know who's played in like 10,000 bands. He played with Dominican Day Parade. He's played in District 9. <clears throat> uh, uh, excuse me, Princess. Tons of bands. Uh, Fahrenheit 451, duh. Um, we're going to continue. We, I think we have, I think it's 31 songs in total. Crazy Eddie has. Oh, so 30... you already, got, you already got, guys got something set up for like the long haul. Yes, yeah. I mean, we're still we're still playing songs from from this. Uh huh. This is our latest, and the songs are still fresh. Yeah. So if you come see us, definitely gonna hear songs from this uh EP. Um, we're gonna continue probably recording with Andy. Uh, and I hope I'm I'm pronouncing his last name right, Andy Gaida. Okay. Or maybe Gita Gaida. Andy Gaida. He used to play with um with Altercation. Super touch and the guy, wow. I have it here as a matter of fact. Uh, do I? Yes, I do. He produced this. Oh, wow. Oh, so the same guy who produced this produced us as well. Nice Our solution. Yeah, nice. shout out to Gingy, who's also from the Bronx, the vocalist. Yeah, yeah. Right? awesome guy. Um, we'll most likely be recording with him. He'll be producing our stuff. We might change our style a bit. Mm. It's still going to be hardcore punkish, but we might change our style just a little bit. Um, but we're going to be continue recording. Um, man, dude. I love these guys. Hey, Chuck, man. You, you're gonna you're gonna be doing ballads and uh and no, you're not gonna do like fuck. You're not gonna do a load and, and fucking black album on us, man. Come, Come on, on, man. Yo, my nigga, I'm gonna pull out the fucking accordion, <laughs> and I'm gonna do some fucking. Norteño and shit, some fucking oh, Mexican shit. cartel fuck. <laughs> nah, fucking nah. Lenny's gonna pull out some the fucking Chalino, string. Chalino you know? Sanchez type shit. <laughs> no, no, some real shit. Um, we're gonna be coming out with some some shit in the future. Uh, we got this big show coming up in Middletown, New York. Um, in October, we're gonna be playing with um Incendiary Device. Shout out to Drew Stone who sings in that band. Uh, we're gonna be playing with a band called RBNX. Uh, we're going to be playing with a band called Redwoods, which features uh, the drummer of Biohazard's son, Danny Schuler. Okay. His son plays in Redwoods, and he's going to be playing that show with us in October as well in Middletown, New York. And Sweet, shit like that. Man. But we're gonna definitely going to be recording. I fucking love this band. This is like one of the easiest bands that I've been with. Um, our last, The last time we rehearsed or had band practice was probably... Five months ago, four months ago, but uh, was it during the uh, for the uh, for our show, right? Was, was hell that- no, bro. Even yeah. before that, oh, was like maybe three months, two months ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, what? man. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. We do our homework. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I, you know, being that I have the easiest shit in the in the band, which is singing. I you put know, on man, my headphones. Listen, listen. I know what it's like to. You be know, Barry. Singer. You know, those fucking mics are heavy, bro. All right, mm-hmm. people. Yeah, you know, we gotta bring in those mics, man. Yo, they don't understand the type of wear and tear it does. Yo, we gotta I save died. ourselves, you know. You know those memes? <laughs> you ever so see those memes where I have the whole band moving <laughs> instruments and the vocalist just chilling at the bar in the cut? <laughs> yeah, yo, uh, you, you, you didn't see me? You in, in the in the club? You had Tracy and everybody setting up, and here I am coming in with my my little thing with my mic. Like, yeah, yo, this shit is heavy, man. But um, <laughs> shout out to my bandmates, man, because I uh, I love this band. These guys are great to work with. I uh, uh Lenny, he's a great fucking guitar player. Uh, Kevin, who's a fucking great bass player. Jason, he's great on drums, man. And when we get together, man, we form like fucking Voltron. And um, I love these guys, man. And they don't they don't make it like like a job. They you know it's fun. Like I look towards, I look, I look towards yeah, band practice, cause you know I have fun it. with these guys. You know what I'm saying? So when we do have a show slash band practice, because we never fucking practice, um, 
You know, I, I look all for you know, I look, I look, I love it, man. I fucking love it. I mean, that's one thing I'll give you guys is, and and of course, um, I I think I you know when I told you that the day that you played, I said you you guys impressed the hell out of my wife. She enjoyed it. She had a great time. She had a great time watching you guys play, and she you know it was her first time watching you, and she was like, wow, you know that was a lot of fun. I I didn't, I didn't never thought I hear that shit come out of my wife's because she thinks we're all pots and pans and shit. So right, right, right. When she watches <laughs> us play and stuff, but she said she enjoyed your show. She enjoyed your set very much. That's another thing, guys. That's why we we I'm gonna say we all of us we like to play with like a mixed bill. Like remember back in the days when they would have like a thrash band, hardcore band. And a punk band all on the same bill. Yeah. That's what that was one thing that I loved about that reunion show with you guys, man. That you know, it wasn't just like playing with hardcore bands. We we're playing with a whole mixed bill. Yeah, we you had it was a nice, it was nice. The opening band was, I think, uh, like a like a thrashy band. There was a death metal band. Right. And there was uh uh there was you guys for in the chamber, and then uh, it was it was nice. It was a nice little bill. Right, man. So yeah. you know, I, I I love shit like that because it reminds me of back in the day when they would have like Mixed bills, which was cool because even before that, you would always see like Rolling Stones playing with James Brown, playing with the Supremes, and they would have mixed bills, which would remind me of days like that. Yeah, to have bands to play with, but like a punk it's... band, a hardcore band, and a metal band. And but that's where you go and you, and you you broaden the horizon for people, so they don't stick to just one. Absolutely, that's how you spread things out. You know, Absolutely. that's why I say that. You know, it's, all, it's, it's good to spread out the genres, man. That people got to get a taste of everything so they don't just stay, it don't become stale being in right. one, you know? Right. And one thing I'm going to say, man, I mean, at that show, man, it, it was good to, to even see you with the guys again together. And then not just the guys, but then having a new member who's also a Bronx metal guy. Mm-hmm. You know, shout out to, uh, what, what's his name? Vinny, the other guitar? Vinny, yeah. Vinny. Shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? And, and you guys had that that thing. You guys were up there like the fucking Power Rangers doing your thing, man. And, and it was fucking great. It was fun. You know what I'm saying? And, it was a lot of fun. And you guys, you know, you guys gave me fucking uh, goosebumps. Even when you guys came out and played the Sepultura cover and shit, you know? And it was great, man. It, 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 it was a fun time. And even seeing you there, uh, silent producer Rich. And Rich is one of those guys that you'll be at a show. And he would just pop out of left field like, yo, what's good? And he'd be like, oh, what the fuck? What the He's fuck been there the whole up? time. And he'd be like, yo, I've been here the whole time, right? And shit like that. Rich, Rich, Rich comes out. <laughs> so, you know, shout am. out to you too, Richie, man. <laughs> Much love to you, bro. Cause, Thank you, man. And, and, I like and, to and, come in with, like, the cape. And then and then the motherfucker would do the Irish goodbye and be like, yo, where the fuck you went? Oh shit. <laughs> I said he's gone. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. No, yeah, so, but so um, Chucky, I, I know that we're wrapping up and everything, but I wanted to say this to you. Um, thank you for being uh such a uh, a big person in the scene in New York, but also with archiving and with uh, being involved and for keeping the scene alive, bro, because you know, like, let's be honest, there is a, a, a little bit of whackness in certain scenes, but you guys keep on um, elevating and and and, and uh, oh, holding that torch for the old school sound, but but also playing with the new bands, like, and staying fresh, you know? So yeah, thank, thank you, man. man. means a lot. Seriously, means a lot. That, and that's one of the reasons why I do it, man. You know, uh, you know, the love, the passion, all that good shit, bro. And, you know, not just um playing in, in, in a band or whatever, but archiving it you know from the days of the camcorder to not from the days of the phone the, yeah. the flip phone and and to now with these camcording having uh camcorders having you know 4k and 1080 1468 yeah. uh, <laughs> what's it up to now 1880 like what the yeah. fuck Yo, it's gonna like be that. enough that you're gonna feel like you're gonna be. It's gonna touch you like, oh. Yo, shit. you 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 can remove <laughs> the white and black heads. You can see that shit off the screen. <laughs> you'll be like, oh, you you'll be popping zits off the screen and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So from archiving from those days until until now, and 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 also supporting bands. Going, to, I I I still go to shows. Whether if it's even hopping on the train to go to the fucking show or getting a ride, get jumping on the car, whatever the fuck, you know, and not just hardcore metal. I I, I go to golf shows, you know what I'm saying? I go to hip hop shows, uh, 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 everything, you know, I'm, I'm very open minded, guys. So, I mean, of yes, course, I mean- my sh- my shit is mostly metal, metal and hardcore music. 
But um, I go to, you know, I'm very open-minded and I go to other types of shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, so not just archiving, but and playing, but um, also supporting and going to 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 these shows that is still going on to you know to this day and shit like that. You know. And uh, one one more thing, one more thing, Chuck. Before we uh we wrap up, I just need to ask this. Somebody somebody was asking about your uh your archiving prowess, and they, somebody asked they want to know. Where is your early footage of Taylor Swift? We know you have it somewhere. You need to pull the shit out and stop the bullshit. We know you have Yo, it. Yo, let me tell you. Not only do I have Taylor Swift, but I have Menudo. Yo. You know oh, I shit. got Ricky Martin. I got I some said. Ricky Martin up in the mix. That's it. I, I got all those. Oh, I got all that good shit. Yo. Go to Chucky Brown's Hood TV. Let's subscribe, go. and you can just <laughs> roll and go back, and you'll be able to see all this good shit. You get to see You're gonna see living. shows of Barry when he had a cereal bowl cut. Oh my god! You know what I'm saying he had a fade without That's the, the one fade. Video nobody needs to see, man. He had the fade. <laughs> Without the fade, so it's like going to the barber shop and be like, <laughs> he'd be like, "Yo, what, what you want?" And you'd be like, "I want the fade, but without the fade." I got you, fam. <laughs> so he'll put the cereal bowl right over the head and cut everything down, take out the cereal bowl, and that's the haircut. Yo, that was All right. That was that was Charlie Vasquez, man, Georgie's brother, man. That was the yeah, worst. Shout out the to worst. Charlie, bro. Charlie, bro. Yo, that was the worst thing I ever did. I thought I was cool too. Went down there, saw that. I was like, ugh. Ah. For, for, for those that want to see that footage, uh, they can go to the church, the famous church show in the Bronx, and the Underworld uh, show that you taped. That's the I, one. Yes. That's in the Underworld. Yes. It's in that one. For those that want to see that that nice hair dude that Barry had, <laughs> type in. Uh, who's playing that night? Close Yo, call. Man, I'm gonna call the White Close House. Close call at the shit, Underworld. Bro. That's it. I'm calling Biden. We're gonna start deleting shit. That's it. <laughs> and look at the crowd. <laughs> Yo, I'm and gonna at screen that time, grab that shit and post it. <laughs> at that time, up, see, you woke up Scar, man. He heard one chin chin. He wanted to get up. You see? At that time, Barry <laughs> used to fuck shit up at the pit too. So you know what I'm saying? So oh my god! Shout out to Barry who used to always dance. Used at to. that time, used you know to. what I'm saying? We're used to now. Yeah, man. Yeah, oh yeah, yo, man. All right, so yo guys, look, man, we're gonna wrap it up, thank man. You. I want to thank Chucky for for hanging in with us, and uh, and thank you for being our first guest, man. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, yo man. guys. Thank, thank you. you for having me. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. Um, that gold medal show, you guys out there watching this shit, make your make sure you guys subscribe. Shout out to the silent producer. Shout out to you, Barry. Shout out to fucking Go to Mentis. Shout out to fucking Crazy Eddie, my band. Shout out to everybody, man. Everybody that all the subscribers, uh, everybody watching this shit. There you go. Make sure you uh leave yeah, comments, close put up. up the thumbs up, all that good shit. Let's you know go. What I'm saying? And uh, thank you for watching, for real. All right, man. Thanks a lot. This is Barry, that goat metal show. Stay brutal.